In this tutorial video, I show you how to convert your photo references into line drawings using a photo editor. Hi everyone, a few of you have asked me if I will just create this short tutorial video for you. And um, basically it's to show how I create um, kind of a line drawing from your original reference photo using a program. So here are a couple of original reference photos and here are the line drawings that you can use for transferring your image across if you prefer to use this. Basically what it does is creates um, it gets rid of all the colour, um, it creates the shadow, the outlines, it simplifies things down so that you can transfer across a much simpler version, say, of this cat. It'll just pick out all of the shapes, all of your main lines, and you don't have to worry too much about all of the details. And you can make these line drawings um, as detailed or um, as less detailed as, as you want. So anyway, the program that I use, you can use other programs, I use GIMP. Um, now GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, is basically kind of a free version of Photoshop and I've been using it from the outset. Um, I don't own Photoshop. If you own Photoshop I know that you can do something very similar in there. So first thing that you would want to do, like I say this is free, simply search for GIMP in your, your um, search engine, it will bring this up and then you can go through and download your relevant version for your Mac or your PC um, however you want to use it. So I already have GIMP installed so let me just bring it up, it will probably try and do an update and what we'll do is we'll go in and I'll open up a couple of photos and I will show you really simple how I, I create those line effect drawings um, images from the reference photo. As you can see, <laughs> I should have opened this up sooner. Um, let me just check here the downloads because I'm on version 2.8. That's fine. It looks like there's new versions here. So 2.10.6 is the latest version. So it looks like I need to get an update anyway on mine. So here we go. We're all open now. Now let me just... I just want to bring this down so it's inside of the screen for you. So I'm going to close the other... Um, you get these other ways of going in, these other <coughs> directories for going in and selecting your um, your instructions. So I'm going to close all that off. You can use that option if you want, but just to keep it simple for this tutorial, I'm going to use the main drop-down buttons across the top. So first of all, I want to open an image file so let me go into one of the main reference photos that we've just been looking at so here we go this is one of the images I'm actually drawing at the moment for a tutorial now you can change but you can go up here to view so this is on 25% of the full image I want to make it a little bit bigger we'll go up to 50% there um, it just means that I'm zoomed in a tiny bit more so we'll just focus on getting this line drawing um, right. We need the eyes and a few of the features. We need to be able to just zoom in and see that they're really clear in our line drawing. So the first thing you want to do, and I think this is pretty much the same as the way you approach it for Photoshop, you go up to something called filters and then you want to edge detect and I think in Photoshop it is simply detect edges as well and come across to this difference of Gaussian so we'll select that first thing here is I need to just drag this across until it's on the cat and what I usually do here 
is I get it somewhere around where the eye is because that way I can make sure I'm getting the detail of the eye. So there we go, that's the eye there and a little bit of fur, that's perfect. So you need to come down to this radius 2 and put that back to 0 first of all. Now you can just take this up one by one one by one but I have found over time that a really good setting to have is around 75 so if I put in 75 and that should then you see there it brings in a little bit more of the detail if I go up to say 175 that's too much and we've lost some of the detail if I bring it back down to 5 we haven't got enough. But just from playing around over time I've realized that 75 is pretty good. We've got the highlight showing there, we've got the lines of our lid, we can just bring this up a bit further, we can see we've got the outline there, we've got some of the fur texture coming through. So 75 is pretty good but you can tweak this up and down until you're happy. Um, if I can just come up to view again and I'll bring this out to 25%. Okay, so going back now into that, we've got the filter. There we go. So I've just pulled this out now. So if I put in 75, I've got this one down to zero, and you want the normalize and invert boxes ticked. I'm just gonna take this across, have another look at quick look at that eye to make sure I'm happy. Yep. And I'm gonna click OK and then it'll just do this little thing and then it'll convert the whole image and what it is, it's literally detecting the edges of each pattern, area, highlights um, really simplifies things down into black and white for you okay so there we go so the next thing you want to do is take away the colour, we want to try and get it all to black and white so come up to the top um, that was a bit quick, come up to the top, collect select colors and then select desaturate and here the top button of lightness will be ticked just click OK and you see desaturate is just the removal of colors so now that is down to black and white I'm going to zoom back in again as well just zoom back to 50% there we go so back now into colors um, and we want to go to brightness and contrast so you want to take the brightness I always get confused here, the brightness all the way down to minus, about a minus 100, minus 99, minus 100 and then we take the contrast up and we take the contrast up pretty much to 100 now you see if you take it over I just feel that's taking it a tiny bit too far so again we want that, we want the whites to be white so this looks like settling at about 93 so I'm gonna go with that normally it's about minus 100 on the brightness plus 100 on the contrast that's a rough rough estimate and that's usually like from experience what it works best so click OK now you can go back in um, with your levels and just adjust this a tiny bit, see I'm taking this up a tiny bit and that's just enhanced my shadow, so if I take it down it softens it now just adjusting that top input level up it's just brought back those shadows a little bit denser so you can play with all of these settings um, again softening this is bringing back some of the highlights a little bit more I'm quite happy, again just tweak them because each picture will be slightly different as well now I'm happy with that, I've got all of these shapes simplified down I've got my outline, uh, I can see all my, my whiskers but it's mainly the key shapes that you'd want in a line drawing you can take this further, there are other things that you can do but this is as far as I usually take it with a piece so let's pull that view back out again to 25% and you can see here it's just really simplified it's just formed all of those dark shadow shapes for the fur 
and taken away your worries about color and texture or anything like that it's just simple shapes and you can put in as much as many or as little of these um, details as you want and then simply all we need to do is we export you can overwrite your original image but you'll be overwriting the main reference photo so usually what I do is I export it as um, and give it a name and export it to a folder so I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to do we'll just do this once more so I'll go file open let's go up to extra reference images in here so let's do the same with this little close-up photo so we'll import this one and we are going to do exactly the same thing let me just make this screen a little bit bigger okay so filters again you'll see here it will show you the previous commands that you've used so it would be you can repeat exactly the same setting that you used on the previous cat um, but what we'll do is we'll go in again and do it exactly like we did the first time so down to edge detect across the difference drif, blah, difference of Gaussian and then we want to just move this across and we'll take it up to roughly where that eye is take it in a tiny bit and there you go, I've got a bit of the eye and a bit of the nose you can just take it out then to see where the fur is as well and you'll see here it has actually still used the previous settings so if I want to adjust this up, if I pop this up to <clears throat> 175 that's not too bad actually this time, but let me just take that back out again and just see so I'm going to just take it up to say 95 and see where we're at then yeah okay so again you see just need to tweak it a little bit, I just want to make sure I've got all those details in the eye so we'll look at the other eye see I've lost some of the highlight there so I'm take it back down to 75 let's take it up to 115 no I'm going to bring it back down, I'm going to bring it back down to 65 yep and I can see there, I can now see the shape of my highlight there as well, that is much better so I'm already picturing ahead, I'm going to add this to black and white, I can just see that shape there as well so I'm going to go with that it's just doing its converting and now it's up to colors let's desaturate that turns it to black and white, it's took away the colors back up to colors again into brightness and contrast take that brightness all the way down to minus 100 and then take the contrast all the way up so there we are at 100, 99, 100 so I'm going to bring it back down to about here we go, 93, 94 and that is fine, and again if you wanted to again come back into your levels and just tweak them a little, so if what happens if I take it all the way up you see all of that fur texture comes in we don't want, quite want everything in there and then come down to the output levels and that is fine, we've got, see there's the highlights obviously we've got our shadows, some little hints of where the patterns are some hints of our fur direction, our main key dark shadow areas and some of our whiskers, everything, everything is there that we need, it's just a really simplified version and then we simply go up and we export as um, and you can also, you know, you can change how you export it whether it's as, um, as a PDF or as a JPEG, it depends how you opened it, you can save it, you know, as different formats as you like but that is how I convert those photo reference into something that works as a line drawing so I hope you found that useful um, like I say, it's 
really simple thing tool to use um, just another little tool to add to your kit for preparation of your reference photos ahead of starting a piece okay so if you liked the video please do give me a thumbs up down below um, and of course do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thank you very much for watching